While Maggie was getting accustomed to her new life at home without Matthew, Sandra was eager to get on with her trip. She thought that being on the beach of Bermuda would provide her with some of the answers to the many questions she had at the time. One of those questions regarded the conflict between her feelings for Mincy and the feeling she continued to have for Mincy's son-in-law, Fred. Despite those feelings, Sandra's main concern now was her physical health. She felt she needed to ponder her life and the possibility of losing it based on the prognosis given to her by those doctors in Minnesota. Sandra had called Missy to give her the time of the flight's departure for Bermuda. As Missy had told Sandra earlier, she would come by her apartment and take her to the airport about two hours before departure. On a brisk Friday morning, Missy made the one-hour drive to Sandra's home in Detroit. When Missy arrived at her apartment, she rang her front doorbell. Then Sandra opened the door and greeted her. Hello, Mincy. Hello, Sandra. I finally made it. Are you ready? I'll be ready in just a second, Mincy. I'm so glad you're here. Yes, I'll be ready in a little while. Come on in and make yourself comfortable. Give me about five minutes and I'll be ready. Yeah, go ahead and sit down. Mincy, I really appreciate it so much that you are here taking me to the airport. I don't know what I'd do without you. Oh, don't mention it, Sandra. You know I'm here for you when you need me. Just go ahead and finish getting ready. You do know now that you have only four minutes left. After those greetings, Sandra went to get her luggage. She soon returned to where Maggie was. As she largely disregarded the time, Sandra said to her, Menzi, I'm all packed and ready to leave now. But before we go, I just want to say that I had a wonderful dream last night. And it was of Matthew. I dreamed that he had a personal chat with me one of the times I visited you and him at your house. And I think it was the first time when Maggie brought me to see the two of you. I know we have to leave now, but I'll tell you about it sometime. Just remind me. Anyway, in the dream, Matthew said as clearly as you are talking now that he was fine being confined to a wheelchair and how much he appreciated me being a part of the family. It was such a comforting dream, Menzie, the confidence he had dealing with his disability. I knew right then and there Matthew's spirit was all around me, even in that dream. Now, what do you think about that, Menzie? Well, yeah. I've heard that's one of the ways our spirits can connect with those who have left us, through visions and dreams. Um, but I must admit, it's a controversial subject, and I don't get into spirits and dreams a whole lot. But I'm not, dis I'm not dismissing the idea. I'm just not very familiar with it. But listen, Sandra, I thought you were not going to give me any details of the dream you had. I'll be sure to remind you to tell me those details later. But right now, I think we'd better head to the airport if you want to make your flight. Okay, Mincy, I'm ready. After that, Mincy did drive Sandra to the airport, and soon after that, Sandra was off to Bermuda. It was a smooth flight to that small island in the Atlantic. Upon arrival, Sandra got her luggage and found a taxi that would take her to her place of lodging for the weekend. It was called Motor City on the Beach Resort. Prior to boarding the taxi, she said to herself, Boy, this place is all I thought it would be. It's so warm and nice here. Then the taxi driver helped Sandra put her things into his vehicle. And soon they were off. The destination? The Bermuda Resort she had signed up for. As they drove along, Sandra was amazed at what she saw along the countryside. Soon the taxi came to the point where the ocean was before her. Sandra said softly to not distract the driver. Look at those waves. Sure is different than Detroit. Because the airport was situated along the coast, 
it was not long when Sandra had the opportunity to view the ocean for the first time. Sandra enjoyed the 30-minute ride from the airport to the hotel in full view of that ocean environment almost the whole way. Then her excitement grew as she got closer to her place of lodging for the weekend. When Sandra arrived at the inn, she got out of the taxi and had the driver unload her luggage. Sandra then entered the building and was impressed with the chandeliers suspended high above the ceiling. She also noticed candles that were uh, secured in small wall fixtures situated on each side of four huge windows. That certainly added to the ambience of the place. The flickering small flames of those candles helped provide a dim light to most of the lobby. Soon, Sandra was met by the owner of the facility. The owner's name was Aaron, who appeared only slightly older than Sandra. Aaron said to her, Come on in. I've been waiting for you. The system notified me of your arrival. My name is Aaron. Aaron Pearson. And I understand your name is Sandra. Can I call you Sandra? Yes, of course. Okay, then. I'm sure glad you're here. But what I want to know is, why come this weekend? Did you know that a tropical storm was forecast for the area tomorrow? Because of the expected storm, the place was evacuated yesterday. So right now, I'm the only one at the resort. And that's only because I live here. I have a suite there in the back. But, of course, now you'll be here with me. So, let me ask you again. You didn't know about the storm coming? N no, I didn't know about the storm. I never look at the news, including weather forecasts, but uh, I'll tell you why later. Okay, Sandra. Don't worry about it. The good news is that it's supposed to be as clear as a whistle before that storm comes. And I'm sure you enjoy the starlit sky of the ocean at night. I mean, it's one of the treasures of this place. And I can always play some nice music on this sound system we have. I'll tell you, Sandra, it can be so relaxing just sitting here listening to the waves. And even listening to good music sometimes. Anyway, sorry, I'm just allowing you into my world. But listen, your room number is 111. And you can put your clothes up for the weekend. And... I'll have a small lunch ready for you when you come back here to the lobby. And we can talk about the storm and uh, some other things. Okay, Miss Pearson. Uh, just call me, Aaron. It'll be just the two of us here for the weekend. Oh, yeah, the chauffeur will be here, too. But he's good at hiding himself unless he's needed. So there you have it. You're all set. Okay, Aaron. Sandra replied hesitantly, addressing her by her first name as she requested. What was supposed to have been just a few minutes of Sandra putting her clothes away in her room turned out to be over an hour. She decided to take a brief nap before returning to the lobby to talk with Aaron. After spending more time in her room than she had anticipated, Sandra finally returned to where Aaron was. When Sandra came back, she found Aaron in a rocking chair, staring out a huge window at the ocean waves beating on the shore. Then Aaron said to her, So, you finally returned, huh? Sorry it took me a while, but I fell asleep. Guess I needed the rest. Well, that's fine. I'm just here passing time. Why don't you go over yonder and get some sandwiches I made for you? When you come back, you can sit here in this other rocking chair and we can talk for a little while. Sandra did just that and came back with some turkey sandwiches and sat next to Aaron in another rocker. And they both enjoyed the magnificent view of the ocean, just rocking themselves back and forth, back and forth. You know, Aaron, 
It's so calm here. I could stay here forever. Just listen to those ocean waves. Excuse me, Sandra, for the pause. Yeah, I could sit here forever, too. I just love listening to the waves. And sometimes you can hear birds chirping, too. But yeah, I come here often and meditate on how good God has been to me. Sandra thought. It's nice out here, but am I going to get another sermon today from this lady? Oh, sorry, Aaron. I was doing some meditating myself. <laughs> no worries, Sandra. Just listen to those waves. And I love that little giggle of yours. I think it's kind of cute. Oh, Aaron, thank you so much. I could never repay you for helping me. Sandra just smiled at that last remark by Aaron and continued to listen to the ocean waves with her. While Sandra didn't look forward to receiving godly advice, she knew she could use some words of wisdom at this time in her life. She was willing to do almost anything to change the negative prognosis that she had received. Yes, Sandra had finally made it to Bermuda. Hopefully, she would get the healing, somehow, that she so desperately needed. While not knowing it at the time, she would also have an introduction to her spiritual self. Stay tuned for both these changes in Sandra's life in future episodes. Well, that's all for today. In closing, I'd like to say, and would like for you to remember, that whatever you may be going through, such as with Sandra and our story with her medical condition, just keep in mind that there's always more, more good things coming your way. We'll see you the next time.